Hello, how are you doing today? This is Rob from Photography, and we're here today with James Boyd. He is a cameraman at Bush Stadium, Scott Trade Center, and uh, do you do the dome also or not? I do the dome. You mm -hmm. do the dome, okay? I just um, not, just not as much. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm um, okay. How are you? All right. Um, first question for you. How did you get into what you are doing today, the film side of it at the stadiums and photography also? Well, I guess to start from the beginning, uh, my father exposed me to cameras when I was real young. I was probably about eight or nine years old. He gave me one of those little box brownie cameras. Okay. If you know anything about photography history, you may, yeah. I mean, otherwise you can go on YouTube. <laughs> And search it. <laughs> the internet, you'll see a picture of it. But yeah, just a small box camera. And because he took pictures, basically pro amateur, like he would take a few weddings here and there. He, he dibble dabbled in some of everything. Okay. But uh, so I saw him with the cameras and, and he saw that I kind of took an interest in it. So he gave me that camera. And I messed around with it a little bit. I, I didn't do a lot, but I did continue to like the art of photography. I always like looking at pictures. Um, and then when I was probably about 13 or 14, probably 14, I um, was exposed to the studio at Channel 4, okay. KMOV. I uh, played in a, in a band uh, at church and we went over there to be on TV in the church. And so you know, you go in early and all that to prepare for your band set up and all of that. And I just kept looking at all the big giant, I mean, they were big back then, <laughs> the video cameras. And was, I don't know who it was, it was a really nice camera guy that worked there. And he was like, you like that thing? You know, he said, come <laughs> here. And he took me over and he kind of let me play with the camera. And I was like, oh man, this is, this is it. You know, I, I, I like that more than photography. Well, that's good. So at, at that point, I kind of pretty much made up my mind I wanted to operate cameras. Okay. Uh, let's see. At the stadium, you do the videography and that. Do you do any of your own projects for videography out, out and about and stuff? Uh, not too much in the last year, last couple of years. Okay. Uh, I used to do a lot of documentaries or uh, independent type videos for independent producers and okay. uh, from time to time I worked for some of the production companies around town. I even worked for some of the news stations as extra board doing some uh, some stuff but that was that was years ago. For probably the last last five years or so it's been pretty much uh, sports and so, as you said, I, I do the, uh, for Fox, uh, well actually whoever broadcasts the game, the baseball games, I do those uh, camera for them. And then other than that, do the Blues, some Rams games, do a lot of college basketball, a um, little bit of college football, and then other things that pop up here and there, sometimes some concerts, um, you know, just, just whatever. It's mostly the live, multi-camera event that I really like and then okay. other than that I do some still photography I still do that and that's usually maybe a wedding or two here and there a lot of portraits and a lot of events yeah that was going to come into my next question what kind of photography do you do so yeah so that's that's it's pretty much I pretty much concentrate on event photography and uh, portraiture where like family okay. portraits and maybe some senior portraits here and there. And I, I don't do a, I don't do a lot. I don't I don't even desire to do a lot of <laughs> those. I, I love sports photography, but usually when I'm shooting sports, I'm shooting yeah. video. So Well what do you enjoy shooting when you do go out and shoot? Uh, you've mentioned you enjoy sports. Is there any other uh, photography that you enjoy shooting? Like for example one day I saw you at the Grand Basin in Forest Park and with the camera and actually I was, I was surprised when I saw it for the simple reason I'm like, well wait a minute, he's a video guy and there's two old that are collecting to me, so. Yeah, yeah I was, uh, I think that day I was just, I was just kind of testing my camera, testing out some things, video and stills. 
Um, one of the things about now nowadays is you can do both with the same camera and switch is just really nice for me because I've always loved both photography and videography but in the past they were so different and now it's you know within 30 years before my eyes it just merged together yeah. into one it's i mean you have it right here and these cameras that we have here and all three of them are technically well except for the gopro gopro is a video camera mm, great quality and debatable depends on how the person uses it but the mm -hmm. other two here are full-fledged dslr cameras mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um let's see I ask you what you enjoy shooting, other than your camera and glass, what is the most, most important piece of equipment to you? Lighting. Lighting. And I guess you could call it equipment, but in some aspects it may not be equipment because you, a lot of times you use natural light. Right. And, like uh, we're using today. Like we're using today. <laughs> and, and I mean, I really, I really love natural light. To me, it, it really brings in the essence of things being natural. I mean, it's, it's wonderful to have lights and to be able to control light, but I just love the look of natural lighting. And that's, that's one of the things that technology has got us to the point now. Whether I'm shooting stills or video, I can use natural light uh, probably 200 times more than you could in the past. Right, and it's so much easier to use the natural light now because of how far the uh, technology of the cameras have come along. Right. So, so speaking of that, I brought you a present. Yeah, I wanted I to that. show you this camera. That, that is nice. nice. What exactly is that? This is a JVC uh, KY210 video camera. Okay. It's a tube camera. The three tube camera. two third inch three tubes um, satacon tube camera when I when I first started uh, with video and stuff back in the 80s in college yeah. you know that's what you talked about was what tube cameras was all it was as far as video goes you had your film cameras but yeah. video they were tube cameras and you talk about what type of tube was in there the same way uh, nowadays we talk about uh, the different types of resolution and all that because it, it determined the quality of, of the, the video. Picture, yeah. But the, if we were shooting this interview yeah. back in 1985 or something like that, there would be three of these cameras <laughs> instead Jeez. of these three tiny cameras that you have. <laughs> maybe, maybe the force of the side of the thing. Let me see this thing. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Now that is just the camera. That yeah, was that was before the, else on it. Right. That was before the camcorder. So wow. you had that and you could feel how heavy that is. Then you yeah. had an additional deck. Yeah, you had that how old like this the entire time. <laughs> yeah. that you is had amazing. an additional deck with the uh, with the tape that that held your tape, the recorder. <laughs> wow. Which weighed just as much as that camera does. And then the cable, the camera cable to attach it to the recording device. Yeah. That cable was thick and long, so it probably <laughs> weighed about five pounds. And with those cameras, you needed a ton of light. I mean, you would need you would need to shoot this interview in here. We would we you'd have at least three one thousand watt lights. That is insane. There you go. Mm -hmm. yep. And this camera, but if you shoot when you shoot these two cameras outdoors, they had such a beautiful picture. They did. It was a warm, soft picture. It was. It's just beautiful. Cool. But if you turned it on indoors, you probably wouldn't see anything but like a hint of a few little dotted lights oh, wow. from the brightest spot in the room. And you also bought an old uh, Canon camera, I think. This this was a Minolta. Oh, Minolta. I'm sorry. But uh, when I first the first camera, this is similar to the first camera that I bought to shoot to make money with when I got out of college. Okay. It was actually it was a Canon A1. And, but it, it was made, basically made the same way and it looked the same way. Um, and one of the things, this is a film camera, yeah. obviously before digital. You put your film in there. One of the things that I really liked about the old cameras was you could shoot with no battery. They, yeah. had, they had a battery 
if you wanted to use the light meter inside. But back then we had these rules, these sunny 16 rules and this type of thing where you set your, your ASA and your F-stop and you just, you just use the principal rule and then you kind of, um, you would adjust from there if it, you know, if the sun went and got cloudy or if it was sunny. But, you know, you, you could go out and just shoot with no battery. Right. Which was nice in the winter thing in the cold weather because batteries don't last long in the cold weather. And for whatever reason, when I was young growing up, it seemed like it was always cold in the winter. <laughs> Other than this year. Yeah. Other than this year, we've had some nice winters around here. We don't have a lot of cold weather. And it, it was just nice to be able to shoot and not worry about your battery dying right. on you. You, just, you can just shoot away. It's, I mean, it's really nice. But film, uh, film, I still, I like the concept of film. It's, it's hard to say I want to shoot film other than digital because digital is just so practical. It's yeah, it's very practical and everything. And the, the thing I like about the digital now is the instant results. If you don't like it, you can go ahead and erase it. Right. Okay, well, with the film and everything. And I didn't get into film because when I started doing photography, it was just digital. Uh, well, this film was going by the wayside at that time, right. and you could clearly see the digital was coming. Right. Um, but with film, the thing that I see with it is that if you had the film camera, you had to go through the, the exposure, get it processed, would cost mm -hmm. money and everything, and then you had maybe one or two good pictures that you really liked out of it. The, the one thing that I did like about film, or uh, uh, sure, maybe I should phrase it. The one thing I don't like about digital is digital has kind of made us lazy in the yeah. process of pre-shooting and shooting because you don't, you kind of got lazy as far as planning out things and you're like, oh, I'll just fix it in Photoshop or whatever. Well, Whereas with that, with the film, you had to plan and make sure that you did, took your steps and did things appropriately because otherwise you didn't, you know, you could shoot a whole shoot and come back right. with nothing. With nothing, you know. and you'd be, ah, oh, what do I do now? So. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot different. Now, and, and I've noticed on the internet a lot of videos now of people talking about um, how to make your shoot go better with less uh, post production. Yeah. So, I think we kind of got into that initial, it's so easy yeah. to just do all this digital stuff. And right, and we're taking a few steps back into the digital to make it look better so you don't have to do as much right. post-production and stuff like that. Like for example, when I take pictures and everything, I try to get it right as much in, in the camera as I want it to look. Mm -hmm. And then so therefore, if I have to do any post-production, like a simple levels adjustment or something right. like that. Do I know how to use Photoshop? Yes. Am I good at Photoshop? <laughs> Photoshop's a big program. <laughs> Okay. Well, and it continually changes. The new yeah. version keeps coming out, and then you got to learn that right, version. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, CS5, got it, mess it, mess it, darn. Well, yeah, for a person like me, I enjoy shooting more than editing. Yeah. So I would rather be out in the field doing the shooting than in, you know, behind a computer or wherever fixing it in post-production. Right, I, I agree with you and everything. And like, for example, wedding photographers and stuff where they're taking 1,500, 2,000 pictures a night right. ain't gonna sit behind a computer for weeks on end trying to fix every single picture. Uh, is there a photo that you have done that you are really like proud of doing that, you know, it's gotten a lot of stuff in video also. Is there one, something that you've done? I know in, uh, Photography, one of my favorite photos that I did was I, I used to be a staff photographer at the St. Louis American newspaper back in the 90s. And I took a picture of uh, Freeman Bosley when he won the uh, election to become mayor. And I took a picture at the, uh, at the party, the campaign party where the announcement came yeah. final that he was uh, actually had been elected mayor and it was a it was a photo of him and his family you know one of those victory yeah. type photos and uh, I really liked that photo and it a lot of people around town had a lot of people request the photo cool. just, just a lot of people around town really liked the photo and I think that that helped me like it even yeah. more too but it was just for me I kind of like 
that, that, maybe that's why I like event photography, but okay. I like uh, you know capturing the moment and telling a story, telling that thousand word story. Uh, in one, one photo, one yeah. photo, yeah. I like that. So I, I really like that picture. Okay. Um, in video, uh, there've been some documentaries that I really enjoyed doing because of some of the footage that I got to help tell the story. But uh, I just I enjoy shooting the sports most of all, capturing okay. some of those great moments in sports. And unfortunately, sp sports, sports being or video being different than still photography, you know, still photography when you do a picture like that, it's it's everywhere, photo by right, yeah. that person, and in video, it's just kind of like you see the video. Yeah, and, and you're you like, never, hey, I did that. Yeah, so, we, well, so, most yeah. people, you never know yeah. the camera guy that did it. Yeah, you know. So and, it, and actually, I, I don't keep up with the majority of the shot. You know, there's the, there are those few shots that you remember yeah. getting, but the majority of them after a while. You don't see them anymore. You forget about them. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think the future of photography and videography is going? Man, that's that's a good question because uh, I think we stated earlier before you know, over in about thirty years since I've really been into it, I've just seen the two come yeah. together and basically mesh as one. I've, I've heard a lot of speculation. You know that. There's going to be no need for still photography because you can just grab the frame yeah. from video. Um, I would hate to see that because there, it is an art to photography. Right, and, and also the thing with videos and everything, typically even at 1020 by, not, uh, you know, the 1080 PI video that you see, whatever you happen to be using, still isn't as good as one frame from a regular still camera. Yeah. Like for well, example, these are 18 megapixels, and if I took a picture with the GoPro, it'd be 12. Right. So. Well, so that, that, that's that's where I can see technology overcoming that disadvantage. You know, like now you have the 4K video coming out where you yeah. can you can have a wide shot and just zoom it right in, yeah. and it, the pixels it just looks it looks so great. It looks as if it was shot, you right. know, with a zoom. I lens. heard a guy the other day talk about 8K video. 8K. 8K video. And that, that's the, the thing that bothers me. You know, I, I have a friend at his house, who, he's really bragging on his 3D TV. You know, and I didn't want to say, you know, 3D TV's out already. Yeah. You got to get a 4K yeah. TV now. Right, yeah, you got to get the 4K 3D. <laughs> right. It's like, you, you can't keep up, you know. Yeah, but, well, but I can see... I can see it. like five years, five, ten years down the road, the 8K coming out. So. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I, I can see it coming to a point where you could just grab a still off a of video and it looks fantastic but I would hate to see the art of photography die. Die because of the video taking over. Right. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel the same way with me so right. hopefully things would maneuver themselves in a way so that that art wouldn't die. Very true. Um, so with that being uh, you know, a problem with photographers. Do you think a lot of photographers to continue what they need to be doing need to be a cinematographer as well? Say it, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> with the way that the you know film is going to where you know the people are thinking that you can take a one single frame out of a video to get that great picture. Mm -hmm. Do you think some photographers, like with the DSLR cameras, need to be a cinematographer as well, you know, to compete with that? No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we need that. Okay. You know, I think you're gonna have enough people that love the art of still photography. You know, have ones who love the art of motion photography slash video, and then you're gonna have the certain amount of people that, that love both. Okay. Uh, so obviously some people do both because it's kind of like now nah, it's kind of a necessity yeah. as a business you know you kind of like I need to offer both but I think some people like like me I've done both for 30 years you know and I'm sure there's other people just oh, like me yeah, that have done sure both for 30 years just simply I can remember sitting in my house debating so I want to do video or do I want to do stills <laughs> you know and I'm like I mean I've debated that for decades. <laughs> I, I could probably still debate that, and it, it's kind of like I couldn't really make a distinct choice. When I first got out of school, 
it was easier to get a job in photography than in video. Okay. It was really hard getting a job in video because when I when I got out of college, uh, it was '83, and so like cable was just kind of starting up. So it was, it was really all the work was broadcast, you know, and um, even the sports came through the broadcast stations, yeah. you know, and so I started out in photography, working at Vincent Price Photo Studios and Prestige Portraits okay. and shooting the portraits and weddings and all that. And then I worked at uh, the St. Louis American newspaper, which I, I really like that, because I like the more event type of catching okay. people, you know, journalistic. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then I got into TV. And uh, I like, I like, I really like shooting video more than photography in the aspect of making a living. Okay. So and that's what I it took probably took thirty years to finally figure it out. But but that's what I, I love shooting both. But I'd rather make a living in video and shoot stills for fun. Okay. So in other words, shoot yeah. what I want to shoot. So it, it works out good for me because I do what I do now in video, and then I can pick and choose the photography, the still photography jobs that I want to do. And that's and that's. <laughs> way to do it to make sure that you still have fun with it and right. everything so right um well my last question was do you like cinematography or photography better and why but you kind of already answered that for <laughs> simple reason i had to let's go like this <laughs> so, okay so um now when you started the photography how old were you about uh well like i said i was about eight or nine when i got my first camera but okay. I don't know if I didn't take it all that serious I kind of yeah. did not take photography serious until I was in college okay and I I was already majoring in TV production because I wanted to do the camera work and then I decided I had music as a minor but then I okay. changed and decided to make photography my minor okay and then so. that's when I got serious about photography and I started making money with it in college because I started shooting parties for the fraternities and the sororities and okay cool so yeah mm -hmm. sounds like you've had a very long career doing it very successful and everything doing it and enjoying what you're doing right that's mm -hmm. to me with photography and everything and even vi videography um if you don't enjoy it why do it right i, agree. I mean there's <laughs> a lot of people out there that go to a nine to five job and they hate the job right Okay, to me it's just, if you hate it, why are you going to do it? And yeah. I enjoy photography, that's why I do this, and I like just getting together with a bunch of other people that do enjoy what they're doing, you know, mm -hmm. as far as photography and videography is going. And so therefore, you know, it's a common bond with all the photographers, because I ain't never met a photographer that's, oh yeah, I hate photography, I just do it because <laughs> I work here. <laughs> yeah. Photography sucks. No, yeah. I've never met any anybody like that at all. Yeah, I and either. so I mean, <laughs> we do it because we love to do it, and it's just fun to do. We see mm -hmm. stuff in a different way than everyone else does. Also, I tell you, I've met a lot of people who, even when I was young, first starting out, but I met a lot of people who took an interest in photography and started photography when they were like near the end. Of their secular career, yeah. and to kind of kind of start looking at it, it's like, hey, I think I'll do photography after I retire, because they, you know, they're like yeah. still not that old, you know. And I think, fortunately, uh, for us, we were able to be exposed to photography at a young age and could make right. that a goal as a career. Whereas some people, like some of the older people that I knew, they didn't really have that option. Fire alarm. <laughs> Amber alert. So, remind me to take that off next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, anyway. so yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I had that opportunity to be able to do that at a young age. And one thing my father always told me growing up, he, he would always say, you know, you know, a lot of people want to be rich and all that, but do something that you really like to do because if you got to get up and go to work every day the best thing to do is do something that you enjoy doing yeah so even even if you're not going to be rich 
But you still, you can support yourself right. and make and a living. Right, and you still you enjoy doing it, so therefore the money isn't that big of a deal to you. Right. Well, it's a big deal, but not <laughs> as much <laughs> as, <laughs> uh, anyway, not, uh, at least I'm making seven figures. So, you know, <laughs> no, it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal because we enjoy what we're doing also. Right. Well, and, I know a lot of people who make a lot of money rich, and okay. they don't seem too happy. Right. So, I mean, I'd rather be happy than be super I, I, rich. Yeah, me too. I'd much rather be happy than, you know, uh, I'm swimming in my money. Yeah, guess what? I'm unhappy, though. No, I'd rather right. much be happier and broke than happy and rich. So, right. So. But there was a happy and... You know, happy and happy on both of them parts. <laughs> but, well, I'd you know. be happy if somebody just walked in and gave us both five or six thousand dollars. That would make me yeah. happy. Hold on. But if yeah. they don't, I'm not going to be yeah. sad. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So. yeah, I yeah, I completely agree with that too. Because then again, if both of us gave us five or six thousand dollars, what would we do? Go spend it on <laughs> equipment. equipment. Exactly. So. Well, at least half of it. So, yeah, so. I have a family, so I have to, so. Have to be practical. Well, I was going to say, there'd be a chunk that would go towards the equipment there. So, you know, like for example, I, I, I want that 5D Mark III. Who yeah, it's yeah. a nice camera. And see, fortunately for me, I have a, a very loving and understanding wife that, you know, she don't mind when I take, like you said, take a little bit of money yeah. and, and update your equipment. Of course, it, it's, a, it's a return because I'm using yeah. equipment to make money. It's not like I'm just buying it to set right. it on the, on the mantle. But, you know, some people's wives, they aren't as understanding, right. you know. So. And it was kind of funny, actually, with that camera right there, the one that's on me, mm -hmm. the first day that I got it, and it just happened by a fluke. And this is when I think that aha moment kind of clicked in my head also. Someone asked me to do a uh, family portrait session with that, you know, after I got that camera. And it no. was that same day they asked me to do it. Oh, really? So, like, <laughs> I just got this camera. Can you give me a few days to so I can figure out some of this <laughs> stuff? And they're like, oh, yeah, he'll be here till the end of the weekend. It's Friday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you had a day. <laughs> <laughs> I had a day. You know, let's figure this stuff out. So. And, you know, I did well enough and everything. But and then I sent him the photos because he was my neighbor. I mean, literally my neighbor. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll go ahead and get this done right away. And all of them started crying. I'm like, why are you crying? Yeah, I mean, you like him, don't you? <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, we love him. This, this, this is the first picture with four generations together that we've oh, ever wow. had. I'm like, <laughs> so it was important yeah, that you learned so, that yeah. camera quick. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I kind of feel bad for the simple reason, you know, I did as good as I could, but I didn't have much time. So. Well, you um, know, yes. one thing I've, I've learned too is, is uh, there's more to photography than the type of camera. Right, you yeah. Know, I mean, obviously, it's, Cause you it's can important take, to know your camera right. and know how to use it. Right. But and you can take a picture with any camera that you have mm -hmm. and capture that memory or that moment. Right. Just the quality of the camera will determine how crisp that picture is technically right. as far as, you know, like, for example, there's different stages of glasses, different stages of cameras and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you get that $10,000 1DX from Canon or Nikon's equivalent, I think it's like a 400, uh, Nikon 400 or something like something that. Something like that, yeah. And anyways, if you get that equivalent, you're going to have the best of the best. Right. But that camera right there and that camera right there, and probably the, the GoPro too, will do just as well as any regular film camera out there has ever done. Yeah, the phone will do it too. Yeah, the phone will do quite well too. I, 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 I love my comparison between yeah. this, yes. this and this. It has gotten from that big to this to right. this in, in a matter of what? 20 years? Yeah, yeah in a matter of 20 so, years. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I'm, I'm always amazed at, I, I took a picture at Mizzou, I was doing yeah. a game at Mizzou, and I took a picture on my iPhone, and I put it on my computer, and I was astounded how good it looks. It took, it took me about five minutes staring at it, I'm like, <laughs> So like, I don't remember yeah. taking my SLR to yeah, take so that like, picture. No, but, and then you looked at the metadata, it's like, <laughs> That was done with my phone. That picture so, looked yeah. so good to be right. done on the phone. But, but that's one of the things with you know with the phone, if you have the perfect lighting conditions right. and stuff, it can, it can take a fantastic right. yeah. picture. It can. And I'm not knocking phones or anything else here, okay, but if you don't have a good condition right. or you know, if it's super dark, mm -hmm. the DSLR will outdo this phone any day of the week. Right. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Facebook started a campaign 
saying that you don't need wedding photographers anymore because just go ahead, create a Facebook page of your wedding and have the p people at your, uh, your guests uh, and everything take all, the take all the pictures instead of a professional photographer doing it. <laughs> Naturally, a lot of people aren't happy about that, but still.